Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Evan, and this is my take on Lamartis. Here's a quick overview of the paints that I'm going to be using in this video, but in reality you can substitute anything you like as long as it's a similar color. You can see I've already got a base layer down of Style Res Black, and then we're going to bring in some Pro Acryl Blue and lay that down on top. The reason I'm using this blue is because it plays really nicely off the red, it gives you a warm and a cool, and it gives that armor a lot more variety. And in order to give the armor even more definition, we're going to go ahead and bring in the straight white. As you can see, sometimes you're going to make mistakes. With things like this, if you're real quick about it, you can wipe it off and pretty much eliminate that without having to go back and redo it. Alright, time to switch over to some light umber for this cloak. In order to preserve the black and blue armor that I've already laid down, I went ahead and masked off the areas that are real close and adjacent to eliminate the overspray. Now we're coming in with a little bit of white, mixing that into the light umber. This is going to give us our highlight color and show where the light's catching on the cloak. Now grabbing our brush, we're going to come in and start blocking in our red. For the base colors on this, we're going to use the burnt red. And while we got the brush out, we're going to use our light umber to block in a lot of these browns. One of the big differences between the models that I was able to find and the real guy is that he doesn't have any of the death company markings. So I'm going to have to come in and do some of that myself. Now I'm going to grab my bold pyro red. I'm going to come back in and highlight all of my base burnt reds just to give a little more brightness and contrast. I'm going to leave these highlights a little bit bigger so that I have room to come in later on with the orange and hit it again. Next up I'm swapping over to white and I'm going to come in on the cloak and get some of the high raised areas get that sharp edge on them and also touch up the skulls and the wings. Here's that orange that I was telling you about. We're going to come in, leave a little bit of the bold pyro showing and just hit a small surface area to give it a really bright highlight. We're going to cap that off with some pure white edge highlights. Now I'm using the white to block in the skull, the wings on the chest, and the wings on the shoulder. Next up we're grabbing our silver and we're going down to the Crozius. We're going to put it on there and get a nice coat and then we're going to touch up the bolt pistol, the chest, and the piping up on the helmet. And here's our magic in a bottle. I'm going to grab my Nuln oil and get that in here real thick. Get it into the recesses and make sure it doesn't sit on the surface. If I was going to go back and do this again, 
given the blue tones that I already had in the armor, I probably wouldn't use the gloss variety, as that would help stay in the surface and bring it back down towards black a little bit. And then I'm going to swap over to the Agrax Earthshade and give the cloaks and all the other brown pieces the exact same treatment. After that wash is dried up, I'm going to come back in with some of our base colors and use those to clean up some of the flat panels. Well, all this riveting cleanups going on on screen, let me go ahead and tell you a sad story. I used to play back in 5th edition, had a nice Blood Angels army. I didn't know that I'd still like it, and I decided to sell it off. There is definitely a part of me that wishes I still had those original models. But right now that just means that I get to buy new kits, build new models, and try new things. I may not be going out and winning awards with my paint jobs, but I'll take the ones that I'm doing now over the ones I was doing 12 years ago. It's all a journey and it's all about progressing. Time for me to come back in and deal with this separated paint on my palette. It may look like a big deal, but all you gotta do is mix it back up, maybe add a couple drops of fresh, and you should be good to go. I decided to put this weapon effect on here just to spice it up a little bit. The way I'm gonna paint this effect up is darker in the back, brighter in the front, just to show that round's already passed through. I wanted to come in and make this skull a little bit more interesting, so I watered down my black and started painting some cracks onto it. It's not difficult, it just takes smooth flowing paint and a steady hand. At this point I was looking at the model and I felt like it was a lot less Death Company and a lot more Ultramarine. So in order to break up some of that blue, I just decided to bring in that red and use it on the shoulder pad trim. The workup on this red area is the same as the rest of the armor. Started burnt red, went to bold pyro red, and then up to orange. All these layers are going to be applied, thinned down, more of a glaze. As I was looking over the model, I decided that Corosius was way too dirty, so I just grabbed my silver again, what I used for the base color, came in, did some edge highlights, and cleaned up a couple of the panels. This is GW, so I figure I better throw a little bit more edge highlighting in. For the last step in our painting process, we're going to put some matte varnish into the airbrush, get a nice consistent coat all across the model. This is going to do two things for us. It's going to cut down any of the glossy reflections. It's also going to give your model some really good protection. Moving on to the base, I grabbed one out of my box of bases that I got pre-made for this army. I played around with his positioning a little bit until I figured out exactly where I wanted him on the base. Then I grabbed my hobby knife, cut out some of the corks so that his foot will sit down into that terrain, and he'll really look like he's part of that base. Once we have that established, we're going to go ahead and drill through, make a spot for his pin, put a dot of super glue in there, and set him right in there. This next step's totally up to personal taste. I do it because I like to blend the model into the base a little bit more. By putting these weathering powders, these pigments, on the model and on the base, it just ties the two together and makes them look cohesive. And that's it folks, that's Lamartis. 
This one served a real good purpose. It helped highlight a couple things for me. First off, I put way too much blue into this model. So moving forward when I get my hands on the real copy and when I do my death company, I'll know not to put such a broad blue band in over top of my blacks. I hope you really enjoyed it. Hope you learned a trick or two and I'll see you in the next one.